guys welcome back to my channel Mori's booktube sorry for ghosting you the last two weeks i had a lot going on and i wasn't able to post my usual friday video i am thinking to post every two weeks from now on at least for the foreseeable future just to make sure that I'm still able to post on a regular basis, just a little less than before. That just to let you know what's going on. So from now on, I think I'll post every two weeks. That might be better. Plus, I might make longer videos then. I don't know. Maybe this is a better route instead of making short videos every week, maybe longer videos every two weeks. I don't know. Feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, what you think or what you want to see from me that would definitely help me but i want to talk about the books that i read during february during black history month i had a lot of books on my tbr for the month and i did not get to read all of them but i'm still happy with the books that i read so during february as I said, I had a lot going on, so I didn't read as much, but I did read four books and I want to talk about them today. I'm going to start off with the book by Frederick Joseph, The Black Friend. I bought this at a Second and Charles, I think last year or even two years ago. I'm not too sure, but I've been wanting to read this book and I'm so happy that I finally picked it up and read it. It was great. I truly think that this is a book that every white person should read. So basically, this book is about how to be a better white person. Frederick is talking about his own experiences as a black cis male in the US and his experiences with anything from microaggressions to problems you know with the police and problems that he has with friends just because they were not educated on specific topics like he talked about situations where non black friends said the n-word for example and he is telling us how the situation played out and what he thinks should have been done or could have been done so he is telling us a lot of personal stories and experiences and it's great he also gives us an idea of which movies to watch, which music to listen to, songs to check out. He also put a, yeah, the Black Friend playlist. So he put all the songs that he would like you to listen to, things to read, things to watch, people and things to know. Yes, people to learn more about. He also put a little encyclopedia of racism at the end. He put all the topics that you might not have heard or maybe you have heard, but you don't want to admit that you don't know what it means. So that is really helpful. For example, affirmative action, white woman tears, Brexit, cultural appropriation. What else? Intersection, melting pot, representation matters. Like all these things, oh, hashtags too, Oscar so white, he put it in here. And during this whole book, he's also talking with other people of color about what they have to say or what they want us palm colored people to know. And I think this was such a great, entertaining book. Like, I don't know, how many pages was it? 200 something pages. So I think I read this within only a couple days and it was very easy to understand and it kept me interested from the beginning. I also like his humor. I had to uh, chuckle a couple times, you know, when he made those comments. Also a little bit like what Z-Way did in her book, Black Friend, uh, with, where she's also talking about issues of racism and things that she experienced. I feel like they have the same kind of 
humor and same kind of like footnotes and comments in between that just <laughs> made me cackle. So that was pretty funny. I can definitely recommend this book to every white person who wants to educate themselves on topics. Even if you think that you already know everything, I think he can still teach you a thing or two. So don't, don't miss out on this. Great book. All right. The next book I read is Nobody's Magic by Destiny O. Burke. This is a book about three southern women with albinism. So basically it's three separate parts and every part is their own person and the own story. They are not connected so it's just really three separate stories and I did the audiobook and I, I don't want to say anything negative, but I kind of did not want to finish this book. If I would have read it, it's very long. If I would have read it, I don't think I would have been able to finish. I had to do the audio. I did learn a thing or two, especially how to properly address a person with albinism, which is exactly this, a person with albinism, not calling them albino. So this is my biggest takeaway from this book, which I'm grateful for. But the stories were a little long and I don't want to say boring, but I don't have another word. So I'm really sorry. I, it's many people liked it. But I, I did not. I'm really sorry. As I said, I don't, I don't want to say nothing bad. I felt, I feel really bad. But yeah, I, I, I could not get into this. But the cover is so pretty. And this was Destiny's first book. So I'm willing to give her another try if she ever writes another book. If you're interested in this, definitely let me know what you think. This really wasn't for me. Then I did read one memoir during February and I am so excited that I finally got to read it. It is this one, Unbound by Tarana Burke, which as you may know, she is the founder of the Me Too movement. So this is not a thick book, 230 something pages. And I actually ended up doing the audiobook as well. She is narrating that herself, which I totally love when an author, especially for a memoir, narrates her own book, her own story. This made it even a little more emotional. And there were parts where I felt tears dwelling in my eyes. I knew there would be sensitive topics. I mean, we know what Me Too is. If not, please look it up. There were people in her life that, I don't want to say not too much because I definitely want you to read this book, but there were also stories about other girls where I was just heartbroken. Like this was really, really tough. I was baffled by all the things she endured and the things that happened in her life. I love this book. I think I actually gave it five stars. I know you're not supposed to write memoirs. I said it before. This is what I learned from the book community. But this was fantastic. So if you do enjoy memoirs, I would definitely put this on your TBR right now because it's a great and important story and she shines a light on issues that are still topic today. Great, great, great book. And I am really happy that I finally read this because I think this also has been on my shelf since last year. The next book is actually an ARC. And by now the book is out. So go and grab a copy of This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan. This is a, I think the term is spin-off from her first book, uh, Before I Let Go. And it is about one of the like friends from the first book, like one of the other characters. Our main character in this book is Soledad. So 
I read Before I Let Go and I enjoyed it. I liked it. You know, I'm not big on romance usually, but I enjoyed how the story developed and it's so detailed and it has so many other aspects than only the love story. So I truly enjoyed it. Plus it was a second chance romance, which I haven't read before. So this one, the This Could Be Us, is actually completely different than I think any romance book I read. Because let me tell you, there's not much romance in the first 56% of the book. What I liked is that this story was so complex. It is very complex. I was not ready for that. There were things that happened. I did not think this would happen or this would what the book be about. I, I started this thinking, okay, this is another love story. But it was so much more. Also, the fact that she had two characters in there with autism and in the author's note she mentioned how she had sensitivity readers and actual parents of autistic kids who read it and made sure that she is portraying everything properly and is not insensitive so i truly appreciated that she did that and made sure that everything is portrayed accurately so there were so many layers to this story and there's some emotional, like sad stuff in there too. And then as soon as 60% into the book, it starts with the romance and the spicy. Woof! Yeah, I'm not too big on like spicy books. So mm, I, I skipped a few parts, like whenever it got very spicy. But all in all, it was like taken from real life. It was so modern and realistic and authentic. Also the characters, as always, when whenever I read a book, her. So I was really impressed. And I truly enjoyed this. I might have even liked this better than Before I Let Go. Possibly. It's been a while since I read Before I Let Go, so I am not too sure, but... I feel like this one is even better and I cannot wait to actually go to the author's event that I don't know if I mentioned that yet I think I just mentioned it on my Instagram but Kennedy Ryan is going on tour like she will talk about this book and I definitely will try to go to one of her events to you know talk to her take a picture get an autograph so let's see these were the four books that I read this month, so I am happy, even though I, I only read four books, but I'm happy with the ones I read. I'm glad to have knocked off some more books of my TBR, and I am looking forward to seeing how many books I get to finish in March. Right now, I am reading Hurricane Summer, which I also enjoy so far and this has been on my TBR for 2024 so that's good and also as you may remember I did start to read The Push end of January and then I paused it to make sure that I get my February TBR done so I paused it and I actually picked it back up now so I hope I will be finishing it also for this month and then I think I finally want to read Down the Drain. Thanks again, Simon Books, for the gift. And I have so many other books that I've been meaning to read. I also have book clubs coming up. I still have to read Next of Kin by Kia Abdullah. I actually got the ebook from Libby. But I just realized that I can't send it to my Kindle. I didn't even know that that's not possible with some books. But I guess I learned something new. But yeah, I don't know. If I can't put it on my Kindle, then I don't know how I'm going to read it. Because I don't want to read on my phone. I know some people do that. But I I look at my phone already too often, too, too long. So I don't want to read a whole book on my phone. So I also need to read Wrong Time, Wrong Place. Wrong place, wrong time. Oh gosh, wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> B 
because that book club is coming up on the 18th, I believe. So, oh, I, I better speed it up now because yeah, I'm a little behind. But anyways, we're going to talk more in two weeks. So I'm looking forward to seeing you then. Please let me know what you're currently reading and what's on your March TBR. <laughs> Bye.